I'd like you to meet Christine. I'd like you to meet Patrick. Meet Octavio. Meet Mary and Gwen. They're people. People. People with problems and hopes and dreams and lives that are as different as each person. Christine wonders why she feels empty even though everything in her life is perfect. Gwen is wondering how she's going to get through another day. Some are grieving the loss of a loved one. Or the end of a marriage. Others are dealing with the stresses of life. They're all different. But they have the same need. One need. One need. They need answers. Answers. Christine tries to find hers through success. Patrick tries to run from his reality. Mary just wants to forget and... Gwen is just sticking to what she knows. They're all searching for life's answers and they all want to find truth. Real truth. There are five billion different people on this earth with one need. Truth. The truth? The truth of God's word. They need the truth, God's truth. Truth. Patrick needs to know that the Bible is full of grieving fathers. Mary needs to know that she is never alone. Christine needs to know that true significance can only be found in Christ. And Gwen needs to hear Jesus call to the weary. They need to know the word, the word whose name is Jesus. They need the word that is true. God's word, God's truth. They need the truth that will set them free. They need to know the truth. The question is, how will they find it? We started this series seven weeks ago, a series entitled, You Are Not Done. We started it, and for seven weeks, we've been sharing the truth of God's Word so that people would be encouraged to regain hope, so that they would know that they are, in fact, not done. In week number one, we based the whole series around a scripture found in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. You heard Alan mention it just a few moments ago, where the Bible says that you can be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So if God's not done with you, you are not done. We went on to study several different things. We talked about how it's important to, to discern God's voice amidst the noise of life. We talked about how our lowest valleys could actually become the valley of blessing. We talked about, for instance, when you and I get metaphorically snake bit, how we can, in fact, shake it off. And then just last week, we talked about next play. Forgetting those things which are behind and moving forward into God's shalom. And I will tell you this, the feedback over the last seven weeks has been unprecedented. We have heard stories that have made us just stop in our tracks. I heard one this week. Just stop in our tracks and just pause and say, praise God. It seems like what we've been going over over these weeks has been very timely in people's lives. And then something really strange, at least really strange for me, happened last Sunday afternoon. At the conclusion of this service, at the 11 a.m. service, I went over to the Next Step area for a few moments, met with a couple people. Then I came back, and as I was picking up my Bibles, and I got my iPad, and I was starting to get my stuff together, and I was walking out, just starting to walk out, right about here. I heard a voice. I heard a voice on the inside. And it was, it was the voice of... It was, like, it was like I heard someone's thoughts. Now, before you get too freaked out by that, um, there's a biblical gift of the Spirit that's called the word of knowledge, which, which is you know something that you can't really know. You certainly can't know it on your own. You can't know it without God's help. So I hear this voice. And... Um, 
It was one person. It wasn't any one person in particular, but it seemed to me to represent more than just one person. Here's what I heard, and, and, and it'll, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. This is, not, this is not exactly what I heard except for the last three words, and they will be exactly what I heard. Got my stuff. I'm turning the corner right here. And I hear this voice that kind of says, I want all that. I, I want all of that. I, I want to have confidence in God. I want to know that God's not done with me, so I'm not done. I, I really want that. I want to be able to shake it off. I, I, I want to have, you know, I want to be able to hear the voice. I want next play. I, I want to be able to forget the things that are behind. I believe in all of that, and I want all of that. And then I heard these three words. But I'm tired. And I get that. I really, I get that. Let's pray before we study together. Father, this morning it is my prayer. I am asking you and I am believing for it. That by the power of your presence and the transforming power of your word, that people this morning in this room and people who watch online, and people who hear it later, that they will receive legitimate encouragement, that there will be hope restored, and that there will be a strength that is deposited in their souls that can come only from you. Lord, I pray that this really happens, and that when we leave here this morning, It won't be that we just went to a church service. It won't be that we just checked the box on a religious obligation. But it will be that we met with you. And we received from you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Ever been tired? I don't mean the good kind of tired. I don't mean, you know... You worked hard or you played hard and now you just need a a good night's rest. I'm not talking about that kind of tired. I'm talking about the kind of tired that one good night's rest will not cure. The problem is deeper than that. Uh, This kind of tired prevents you from having a good night's rest. And if in fact you do get one, you still wake up tired. And you go through your day tired. I want you to open up your Bibles today to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. If you need a Bible to study along with us, please raise your hand and Usher will bring one to you. What the scripture that we'll study today will address is more like an inner exhaustion. An inner exhaustion. In other words, you've been battling. You've been battling, fighting emotionally and fighting spiritually and fighting off all kinds of conflict and and, and fighting just to keep it together. And you just don't know how much more fight you have in you. And before we get into the scripture today, if that is you, I want you to know something. I want you to know that you're not alone. The vast majority of us in this room have been there. I have been there. Now, I am not there now. I am energized. I am fully jazzed. Thank you, Jesus. But I have been there. I actually believe that Jesus had been there. You know, when he was in the desert... After 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and fighting one temptation after another, I believe he was there. On another occasion, in Matthew chapter 12, we find that he's fighting against the Pharisees. They actually call him publicly. They call him demon-possessed. And then they plot to kill him. The very next chapter, in Matthew chapter 13, we find that he's gone to his hometown. And when he gets to his hometown, he's totally disrespected there. They say, wait a second, he's just a carpenter's son. His family is here. And the Bible says in that chapter that he couldn't even do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. 
And then the following chapter, back to back to back, he gets news that his cousin, we know him as John the Baptist, who had been imprisoned, has now been executed. The one person on the planet that seemed to get him, at least most of the time, has now been beheaded. When he hears it, here's what the Bible says about Jesus in Matthew 14, 13. It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. Now let's be clear. The Bible does not say that he went there to sulk. Uh, you know, the, it doesn't say that he pitied himself. It doesn't say that about this or anywhere else in the Bible about Jesus. I, I believe what he does when he goes there by himself is what we're going to study in Isaiah chapter 40 today. I believe that it is how he and we recharge and renew and rejuvenate. Isaiah chapter 40, we'll begin reading in verse 28. What we're going to do is we're going to read 28 through 31, and then we're going to come back and break it down into some bite-sized applicable chunks. But Isaiah 40 and verse 28 says, Have you not known, and that's a rhetorical question, they knew. Have you not heard, they had heard this all their lives. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths, how many of you know if we were reading that in New Jersey, it would be even the youths, right? Say that with me this morning, ready? Even the youths, come on, you got to say it a little better, you got you to do this, ready? Even the youths, all right, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly f- fall. But those who wait on the Lord, the NIV there says hope in the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. New living says find new strength. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amplified Bible ends it by saying, or be tired. Now Israel was in captivity Uh, The Babylonian captivity when this was written. So these people were enslaved people. They were in chains. The audience that Isaiah is speaking to, they are tired. They are frustrated. They are exhausted. They are disappointed. They are confused and understandably so. I think the only way in which they really, you know, swung and missed on this one is that Israel was disappointed in God. They blamed God for their captivity when the fact of the matter is it was their own sins that brought them into captivity. But God is merciful. How many of you are glad God is merciful? God's merciful. So the prophet Isaiah, he cries out. And to these people, here's what he says. He says there is a reality more powerful than your captivity. There's a release available from your chains. There is a remedy for your inner exhaustion, no matter how weighed down you may feel. Now, we may not be in Babylonian captivity, but many of us are still in chains. We're in chains of past failure, or the chains of regret, or the chains of addiction, uh, the chains of terrible things done to you in your childhood. Or maybe we're in the chains of broken relationships or broken dreams. What the prophet of old shouted to his generation echoes through history and speaks to our generation today just as loud and as clear as ever. So Isaiah begins with reminding his people who God is. Take a look again at verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Remember who your God is. Turn to somebody next to you and tell them. Say, remember who your God is. Remember who your God is. First, he says, he's the everlasting God. Olam Elohim, the eternal one. The one who is not 
tethered by time. He created time. Time serves him. He is therefore never late, rarely early, but always on time, right? He is the everlasting God, Olam Elohim. And then he says, he is the Lord, the yod He vav He, unspeakable name of God, where we get the name Yahweh, but he is the one whose name is too sacred to say. He is the self-existent one. He is the great I am. He is the one who sees and hears and comes down to rescue his people. Remember who your God is. He is the everlasting God. He is the unspeakable one. And he is the creator, is the third name that Isaiah uses. The creator, bara, which means the one who creates and chooses to make fat. In other words, when God creates, he doesn't create cheaply. He doesn't create, you know, skimpy. He creates in abundance. So his power and his wisdom are endless. And he desires to share that infinite strength and insight with the weak and the weary. In other words, and if you have an outline, fill in your blank. Or if you're following along on you version, ready? The Lord knows your situation and can do something about it. The Lord knows your situation. He's not cosmically detached. He's intimately involved. He knows your situation and he can do something about it. How many of you know that Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly to anyone who will receive it? Anyone. Remember on the great day of the feast, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stands in the temple and he cries out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Anyone. Anyone who is parched, anybody who labors and is, you know, heavy laden, anyone who is weak and tired and broken and burdened and fettered and exhausted. Anyone. The next verse says this. He gives power to the weak. Say that with me. He gives power to the weak. Say it louder. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. That's who your God is. That's his person. That is his character. He doesn't, you know, give power to the supposedly strong. He doesn't ration his power to the religiously self-righteous. He doesn't help those who help himself. No, that, that, that's not who he does. No, no, that's not your God. God helps those who help. No, he doesn't. No, no, no. Your God, the God who loves you with an everlasting love, the God who loves you with an inseparable love, the God who loves you with an unconditional love, with no strings attached, listen to me carefully, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, the emotionally battle-weary, those who are tired to tears, he increases strength. What a good God. I said, what a good God. What a great God. The next verse says this. Even the youths, those with no body fat, no love handles, no double chins, who could eat anything they want and not gain an ounce, right? The most spry and vigorous and physically fit specimens among us, even they shall faint. And be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. See, human beings, no matter how strong we think we are, listen carefully, we are not self-generating. In other words, we are dependent on outside sources for strength. But God, let me say it again, but God, God is self-generating. In other words, listen carefully, he has abundant, infinite strength that never weakens, never, ever at all. And the extremely good news is, he wants to give that away. God never gets tired, never weakens, never gets up on the wrong side of the bed. How many of you are glad? Well, he doesn't really have a bed. The the, the Bible says that, that, that he doesn't slumber or sleep. Never gets tired, always strong. His infinite, almighty omnipotent strength never diminishes one iota. It is indepletable, which is probably not a word 
but it might be now, all right? And he wants to, he desires to, in his heart of hearts, give that strength and give that power away. Mm. To whom? The next verse tells us. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord. Now the word wait in Hebrew is, is not used the same way that we would use the word wait in English. This is not you know, waiting at the doctor's office. This is not waiting for a package to arrive. This is not simply, you know, marking the passing of time. This is not a passive waiting. As a matter of fact, the original word in Hebrew is a very active word. It is the word kova, and it means to look for, to expect, and check this out, to bind together by twisting. Those who are bound together with the Lord by twisting. Those who look for, look at how the Amplified Bible puts it, It says, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, say that with me, who expect, look for, and hope in Him shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Isaiah the prophet is calling upon people in captivity in his day, listen carefully, not to run ahead of God and solve their own problems, but to trust to to expect, to look for God to solve their problems. And God the Holy Spirit is calling upon His people today through the words of Isaiah to do exactly the same thing. Don't get ahead of God and try to solve your own problems. Turn to the person next to you and tell them. Say, don't get ahead of God and try to solve your own problems. Go ahead, tell them. Turn back to that same person, look at them and say, especially you. Go ahead, tell them, especially you. No, he's telling them, no, 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 today, today, trust God. Trust God. Expect, look to him to solve your problems. Why? Because his solution is always on time. It's always the right one and it's always on time. Remember, he is the Lord of time. Now, now, my family, I need you to lean in and really listen. If you are weary or worn out, if you can hardly muster the strength to believe that you have a future, if you feel like you're done, if you you feel like you'll never escape your past, if you feel like you're doomed to circle the same mountain again and again, you're, you're doomed to stay stuck in the same rut, you're doomed to repeat your former mistakes again and again, if you have this nagging feeling that your best days are behind you, if you've thrown away all hope that you and your circumstances will ever change and you are tired, Remember who your God is. Remember who your God is. Remember the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Remember El Olam Elohim. Remember Yahweh. Remember the self-existent one. Remember the great I am. Remember that he is Yeshua, Hamashiach. He is Jesus Christus. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. He is the God of all strength. And remember that the God of all strength is your God. And he can and desires to give you exactly what you need, exactly when you need it, whether you've got to mount up on wings like an eagle and soar, or you've got to run like a marathoner, or you just need the strength to walk across the living room. He gives strength to the weak. Never forget, there is nothing beyond the reach of God's compassion or power. 
my wife said to me in between services, and she says this a lot, that God's, let me say it this way. I'm almost ready to call you up on stage to, so I get to mean you're not coming. Okay, so, that no one or nothings know can compare or compete to God's yes. When God says yes, it just doesn't matter who or what says no. There is nothing beyond the reach of God's compassion or power. Again, he's the creator. He's the creator and he created you. And he created you in his image and after his likeness. On the inside, you look just like your daddy who art in heaven, right? And he has a gracious plan and he has a shockingly good destiny for you. He is the omnipotent maker who is determined determined to give abundant life to anyone and everyone who will let him. The lie is you're done. The truth is the Lord can transform you and your circumstances. I, I'm going to pause there for just a minute. I did in the first service. I want to again to right now. I, I, I drew up that sentence and I put the word and in there very intentionally. And here's why. You know, you get around Christian circles long enough and you hear certain things long enough and sometimes it gets watered down, I'm sorry, to this. Well, you know, the Lord's really not going to change your circumstances because, but, but he will change you. Well, amen, hallelujah, yeah, mm, yeah. But the last time I checked my Bible, there's nothing too difficult for God. The last time I checked my Bible, nothing shall be impossible for him. Is that right? So you know what? Yes, God will change you. No doubt about it. Yes, he'll change you. But he can change your circumstances as well. He's the creator God. He's the Lord. He's the maker of heaven and earth. He can change your circumstances. Okay, I feel better now. So let's go back. Listen, if you have ever entertained the thought... If you've ever entertained the thought that whatever the future might hold for you, it will always be tainted with regret. If you ever lose hope. If you ever think, well, yeah, sure, God acts on the behalf of other people, but my situation is beyond him. He has forgotten me, and I am tired of trying. Then remember, do you not know? Have you not heard? There is nothing that a compassionate creator cannot change. Nothing. I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I just want to reiterate it again today. It's, on, it's on, uh, on my iTunes. John Foreman, lead singer of Switchfoot, in an album he did all by his own, a bunch of them, but in a song call, called Your Love is Strong. It, it's, it's like the simplest truth in the world, and it is profound. In that song, he says, two things you told me, that you are strong and you love me. Two things you told me, that you are strong and you love me. I'm tempted to sing it, but I'd like for you to stay. Do this with me, say, Two things you told me, that you are strong and you love me. All together now. Two things you told me, that you are strong and you love me. How many of you know if those two things are true, everything's going to be all right. (laughs) Everything's going to be all right. You matter to God. Let me say it again. You matter to God. And that's not just a little catchphrase. If you really think about it, and we want to be theologically correct, here it is. Ready? Do you know what God values you at? Here's where he places your individual value at the price of the blood of his only begotten son. You are of infinite worth to him. And no, you're in, let me say it this way. You're of infinite worth to him no matter what. No matter what anybody has said about you. No matter what anybody has said to you. 
no matter even how you feel about yourself. Listen to me. All that stuff is irrelevant. Well, you know, I kind of feel irrelevant. Well, you know, when I was a kid, they told me irrelevant. When I work, they like, irrelevant. Here's the Bible truth. Here's what God says. You are loved. You are accepted. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are blessed. You are gifted. And you are highly favored. So much so that you are indwelt by the presence of the God of the universe. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So look to him. Look to him expectantly. Trust his word. Have faith in his power and in his promises. Believe that things can change, that things will change, and that you can and will change as you release yourself continuously into the hands of God without reservation. Amen? We're going to stop there. Laura, is Laura here for the keyboards? There you are. Come on, Laura. Come on up here. I know on your outline there's still some more stuff. There's 1 Kings chapter 19. And uh, for all of you OCD people who feel like we didn't finish and that's really making you anxious, uh, you know, we'll do that next week. Maybe, maybe. But anyway, what I think we need to do right now is, you know, we're in week seven of this series. We're probably going to go a couple more weeks. And I just think it's really important that we pray for people today. So I want everybody to stand. Let's all stand. I want you to close your eyes once you're standing just so that you focus on the Lord. Maybe even right now as you're standing, just begin to rehearse some of the word that you've heard today. We're going to really practice what we just studied. We're going to wait on the Lord and and an active waiting. We're going to look to Him. We're going to expect. We're going to hope in him. We're going to trust in him. And I want to pray with people today. And I know we have elders and staff members and leaders who are going to help me. And so here's here's the deal. If, If that voice I heard last Sunday before leaving this sanctuary, if that was you, and I don't really mean literally, but if, if you're tired, you've got an inner exhaustion. Yeah, you want all this. You want everything that God has for you. you and you believe in it. You believe in His promises. You believe in His power. You, you believe all that's real. But you're tired. You're just exhausted on the inside. And maybe sometimes you lose hope. You lose hope that situations and circumstances are ever going to change. Some of us, I know this specifically right now by the Spirit of God, you lose hope that your marriage is ever going to change. Some of you lose hope that your financial situation is ever going to change. And it's tiring. It's draining. Well, today I want to pray with you because I believe, I just believe that the Spirit of God can do something on the inside of us when we pray for one another. When we gather around one another and we join our faith with your faith, when we link together. I mean, Jesus actually said, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So we want to do that today. We want to agree for your strength. We want to agree that you will be able to mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint or get tired. That you'll keep on keeping on in the strength of Almighty God. So if that's you, if, you, if you're tired on the inside, if you lose hope, if you're in the midst of what seems to be an unchangeable situation, then I want you to come out of your seats and come to the front right now. Just come and join me here and we're going to pray. Just as Laura sings, 
And she's going to lead us in yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes. As she sings, you come out of your seats and just join me here. Yeah. some of my leaders to come. Those of you who were in the leadership group with me last spring, elders, wives, staff people, come and stand behind somebody. And just put your hands on at least two people right now. Just put your hands on at least two people. I want everybody to have hands on their back right now. Adam, where are you? Adam Hernandez, come, come and just stand here with me and pray with somebody. Come on. Everybody who's standing, join me and pray for these who need strength. Let's sing with Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you today that your promises, all of your promises are yes and amen to the glory of God. And Father, I pray for each and every one of us, those who are standing up here and those who are standing at their seats, Lord, that we would all receive a fresh infilling and a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon our lives. Lord, give us wisdom, give us vision, Give us insight and give us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated for just a moment if you would.
little religious calisthenics. Stand up, sit down. You'll be standing in just a moment. But before we go, just a couple of announcements. If you haven't already filled out a Hey, I'm Here card, take a moment. They're in the seat backs all over the sanctuary. Take a moment and fill out that Hey, I'm Here card, especially if you have a prayer request. We compile a list every week, email it out, and we pray for one another. So if you have a prayer request, place it on the Hey, I'm Here card. If you're here for the first, second, or third time, take a moment, fill it out completely, and you can place those cards in the little brown boxes on your way out at each exit, unless, of course, it's your first time. If it's your first time, take a moment, fill it out for us, and bring it to the information desk in the lobby. We've got a gift for you there. It's our way of saying thank you so much for being with us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, Let's see, two more announcements. The first announcement is next Sunday. Say that with me next Sunday. Next Sunday, right after this service, we are going to have a party, and it's going to be outside. We call it Fun Town Throwdown. There's a, a chili cook-off, a chili throwdown, actually, and the winner will get a trophy. We have a field goal kicking con- contest, and there'll be a trophy for that. Teens versus adults touch football. We've got inflatables for the kids. We're going to do a trunk or treat, so please listen carefully, everybody. Please, when you come to church next week, before you come, fill up your trunk with candy. Fill up your trunk with candy. If you don't, the trunks will be empty and all the children will cry. So fill up your trunk. No guilt, but anyway, fill up your trunk with candy and come next week so we'll do the trunk retreat. It's going to be a great, great day. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's a great day to bring a guest, to bring some friends or family members. We'll have a lot of fun together. And the last announcement is a week from Friday, November the 2nd, is Potpourri. Potpourri, ladies, that is your night. It is ladies' night, and it is tremendous. We do it once a year, and it's a great time. This year, it's a pajama party, so bring your PJs, bring a quilt with you to sit on. Um, It's going to be a night of worship and teaching and breakout groups. You're going to have breakfast for dinner, which is always fun. So we're asking ladies that you also sign up today at the information desk for a side dish, a breakfast side dish to bring that night. Tickets for the event are just $5 each. So today, right after this service, just make a beeline for the information desk and grab your tickets. And I would encourage you to buy some tickets for some other people too, family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors, that you can just give them. You can just bless them with a ticket. And then on that night, ladies, you will have a blast. So let's all stand together. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Ladies, go get your potpourri tickets right now.